Welcome to today's video. I'm Dean Thomas, Managing Director, Caffili Funeral Services, CFS. Over the last couple of years, the direct cremation market has rapidly grown. It now accounts for around 20 to 25% of UK funerals. How has that affected the use of funeral directors or funeral directors in general, would you say? So one of the problems is that as funeral directors, there's a high fixed cost base. So with 20 to 25% of funerals being low cost, it potentially could affect the future viability of a lot of funeral directors and has meant that many funeral directors have had to cut staffing, cut costs. It's opened up new opportunities, but lots of the providers are actually cremation companies, not funeral directors. And the reason the costs are so cheap is that they don't actually have the 24 hour facilities. They don't have the staff, they don't have the premises and they don't provide the facilities. So basically those who are paying for normal funerals are subsidizing those who are having direct cremations. Okay. So to help people understand like the reasons behind the trend of direct cremation said, why do you think more people are opting for this option? Is it just the price or is it something else? Or, or what do you think in your opinion? I think most people will say, if you watch daytime television, it's full of, apart from charity adverts, it's full of direct cremation adverts, giving the myth that if you don't want a religious service, you should have a direct cremation, that you can save 60% on the cost of a funeral by having a direct cremation, by bombarding that that's the modern alternative and that's what people are going for. The actual reality is that it's not the funeral service, it's just effectively the disposal of of the person's body. There are no funeral director services at all. It's mainly dealt with by a call centre. We said most of the crematorium companies that are using capacity within the crematoriums to offer a service and using unregulated funeral directors to deliver the services. Okay. What would you say the benefits are of a direct cremation if somebody wanted one then? There are benefits. So the benefits are that you're not so constrained to times and dates because nobody will be there. It doesn't make any difference when the service is. You can have the ashes back to do as you want, as you can with an attended service. You're not constrained by waiting for the availability of celebrants, ministers, etc. You could have a service in church at any venue at any point in time and just have the cremation separately. How would you say the funeral industry as a whole is adapting to direct cremations then? So a lot of funeral directors have cut, have cut prices to a level um, without properly understanding their costs to a level that's quite suicidal. The old adage, if it's too good to be true, it has to be. There are a lot of new starts who haven't got funeral homes, haven't got staff, um, are basically um, picking people up from hospitals and then there's a lot of subcontracting from one funeral director to another. So there's been a lot a lot of changes. We are finding that increasingly now families are finding that it wasn't what they wanted. They've got their relatives ashes and they need to arrange them to be buried or they felt that they didn't have the the goodbye. So we are finding that increasingly now we're having families come to us where we didn't arrange the cremation. So we're having to arrange services now where we didn't actually do the service, which is new compared to what we've always done in the past. Okay, so then we spoke a bit about how the funeral industry has adapted as a whole. How would you say that CFS has adapted? So at CFS, we've created our low cost subsidiary, CFS Direct Funerals, which means that we can offer an unattended cremation at a competitive price. We can also offer the next step up. If people want viewing, they can have viewing. And if they wanted a service at the crematorium, but without the hearse, without any no frills. So we've created our no frills, low cost subsidiary CFS direct cremations. I know we speak a lot about, don't we, the, the TV advertised ones and the CFS ones. So if somebody was coming to you for a direct cremations, what makes your direct cremations Different. So the difference is, first of all, with us, we're handling everything. So you can meet us, 
you can come into one of our funeral homes, we'll come to you, we'll speak with you over the phone, so you're not dealing with the call center. We are the people who will actually be taking care of everything from first contact to whatever your wishes are for the ashes. You know that we actually look after your relative, so they'll be in one of our funeral homes. They won't be left in a hospital mortuary for weeks. We won't be subcontracting out to different people. You know that we'll help you. If you want to know the day, we'll tell you the day. We can offer a service where one or two family members can actually be present at the crematorium on the day. You can send flowers, we can arrange music, so we can give you all the personal options, but still without any, without a service on the day of the cremation. Why do you think it's important to give those personalised options to families? I think from our experience, lots of the families who didn't have it have later found that they feel that they didn't actually grieve for their relative um, they didn't know where their body was, they didn't know when they were cremated, they weren't able to send flowers, they weren't able to think of anything, um, they weren't even able to, to see them, they couldn't have them dressed in their own clothes. Lots of the things that are very important to those who are left behind isn't available with the vast majority of the direct cremation companies. It's only available through a funeral director. Okay. Let's talk a bit about the ethics of direct cremation, then. Do you think it's a respectful way to say goodbye? Do you think it's a proper way to say goodbye? Because I know you mentioned that more families now are thinking that it's not the way they wanted to say goodbye to their loved ones. So what's your opinion and your view on that? I think it's ethical in terms of if, if that's what everybody actually wants. But I think there needs to be more research into the true impact of direct cremation. Certainly, if somebody had a religious belief, nearly every religious denomination would say that there isn't an opportunity for the religious committal part because there's no priest or minister at the crematorium. The other factor to consider is who's actually handling everything. A funeral director, the vast majority will be members of one of the two trade associations and will have a code of conduct and be audited and inspected. A direct cremation provider is not governed by any of those. So that opens questions of ethics. The cremation part is covered by legislation, but if you are not dealing with a funeral director, the crematorium part has no code of conduct about the collection of the deceased, how a deceased is kept, identification, that is all outside of any code of conduct and I think that opens questions of, of ethics. There's nobody is actually policing or looking into the direct cremations part of the funeral industry. Yeah, because that's obviously what you mentioned earlier, wasn't it? So direct cremations being regulated, what, why do you think that it isn't at the moment and do you think it will be in the future or what's your kind of view on that? It fell through all of the investigations. Unfortunately, I don't think it will be regulated. And at the moment, nobody is checking who, when you ring a direct cremation provider, who's actually looking after the deceased, what equipment, how trained are the staff, have they got the facilities, have they, have they got the competence to deliver the direct cremation is, as I've said, just basically a cremation company looking to fill their spare capacity within their crematorium by subcontracting out to whoever is the cheapest to pick somebody up from a mortuary and deliver them to sometimes the back door of the crematorium in a coffin. Just to round that up then, if somebody was looking for a funeral or wanting a funeral, who would be the right person to get a direct cremation? Who wouldn't be the right person to get a direct cremation? Yeah. Imagine there's like you said, there is some benefit for some people, but for other people, it may not be the right thing. They won't get to say the perfect goodbye. The direct cremations have worked with us is where people have died from overseas and the there needs to be a cremation to take the ashes back or bring them back to the UK, or where there may be a delay for a cremation, but the family have wanted some form of ceremony or service, or where the entire family have agreed that they don't want any form of send-off for for the for the person so it is right for some people but unfortunately a lot of people think that 
if you don't want a religious service, if you think that there's not going to be anybody there. We've had lots of people who felt there would be nobody at their funeral, and then the family have said there would be 20, 30 people there, and cost can be kept low and have a simple attended service that people don't realise most funeral directors offer. 